What is going on, everybody? It's Trebe from Trebe Talks here, and it is week 14 of our NFL picks, locks, and upsets. And it just it feels nice to have everybody back in the studio two weeks in a row. Colge, how you doing, brother? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Dude, That's the real question. <laughs> we, we, we need to know how Trebe is doing. You know, Trebe... Troops hanging in there, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't really ask for too much. I mean, we're losing football games, the Jags are, and we're getting one loss closer to getting Justin Fields each week. So that's all I can ask for. Bryce, the Jets had it in the bag. Well, you know why? I'll tell you why they lost the game, folks. <laughs> Well, it's because Frank... The Jags had Trevor Lawrence for about a minute and 30 seconds. Okay, but here's the thing about the that Jags. That was his best time as a Jaguar. Is, I'll be honest, Mike Lennon. I just think the football gods, like, they're they're treating this man well. He got a ricochet touchdown. I mean, <laughs> off of DB in the first quarter to LaVisca Chenault. Uh, you know, just the luck of the gods got, kept him in the ball game the whole time. And, uh... Unfortunately, just not enough to get it done. And then I'll tell you why the Jets lost. Frank Gore, first carry, nine yards, oh, no. concussed. Yeah. For the rest of the game. Yep. That's why they lost the ball game, folks. Because <laughs> he didn't when get four yards of carry. When you don't get Frank in the nine. ball game, you ain't got no he chance. He did get of nine yards of carry mm-hmm. that yeah, game. That's, that's his right. best for the season. That's exactly best for the year. Can't do any better. <laughs> Keeps improving every week. That's what you want. Did from AP a 37 score a touchdown this week? Two of them, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Excuse two me. of them and 57 yards. And rushing. he had two touchdowns last week. Oh, and guess what? The Detroit Lions, they're riding that W after fighting their coach. You know, I think uh, I think one of the things I want to do at the end of the season is kind of go through these podcasts and kind of at least make some kind of compilation of some of the best things that we said during these podcasts and Frank Gore, I think, is going to be a, a key component. Frank Gore count. <laughs> yeah. Frank or Gore. AP, old Frank running Gore. back. <laughs> Adrian Peterson. <laughs> you guys hate him. No, honestly, no, no, it's going to suck when they die. retire. It is. I mean, it's like, going to hit a soft there's not, spot. There's not really that many backs that are like, <laughs> that are go get him or pound your face. Mm-hmm. And like, those running backs will literally run at you. Like, mm-hmm. will like, instead of, like, running, like, literally a step away, they'll run at you instead of running for a touchdown. They'll run through you and then a touchdown. That's what I love about running backs and the running backs back in that time is because they'll run at you. They ain't scared. They want the pain. And that's one thing that I like about uh, James Robinson. I think James Robinson's going to kind of bring that kind of style to Jacksonville, a little bit more of a modern style, that kind of uh, running for James Robinson. But um, another reason why I'm doing pretty good uh, Colge is it's the only one that took the Washington football team to end the mm-hmm. Pittsburgh Steelers' undefeated streak on the podcast. Did you watch that game? I did. You know, we played like shit. Washington deserved to win that game through and through. We didn't deserve to be in it at any point in the whole game. We're just... Something's not clicking. Big Ben's not throwing good dots, or re- or actually no, no, it's the receivers. This is what this is why this is why you guys are going to start losing. You're making Big Ben throw fifty times a game. You are pulling a Patriots. You're making him throw fifty yeah. times a well, game. We don't have Make, James listen, listen, you're making him throw fifty times a game. Making him play more. Make him do more things that are unnecessary. You have no run game. Your defense is now is falling apart. Two of your main guys are out for the season, and other, and more are weak. You guys are falling apart. I'm guarantee you. I'm calling it right now. You guys are out first week in the playoffs. See, it's quick how you know people can panic. You know, mm-hmm. from an 11 and 0 to 11 and 1 team. But let's credit this Washington football team a little bit. This is not a bad football team. Let's credit the whole NFC East. Really, let's talk about the New York Giants beating the Seattle Seahawks. And I guess that you did. I, I, I you know, that. that was one thing we both picked NFC mm-hmm. East teams to do it. I mean. And I mean Pittsburgh still having to play three games in twelve days span. That's which, hard. Which That's I hard. mean, it's really not though when you take it into consideration. Man. I mean, you think about it. A twelve. A, I think every NFL team, when you think about it, plays three games in a twelve game span. Because you think about it, that a Sunday game, a Thursday, and a Sunday. So that is three games in a twelve game span. Yeah. So. I don't know. I mean, it, it might be harder later in the season, mm-hmm. but, I mean, 
not taking anything from Washington. I think Washington, I New York, they're going to be battling. For sure. And uh, Alex Smith, I mean, Big Ben and Alex Smith, I think, are the two guys that are competing for the Comeback Player of the Year award. And mm-hmm. Alex Smith's got the head-to-head over Big Ben, so, I mean, it's it's hard to say that Alex Smith. I don't think, I what's, what's Big Ben coming back from? He was hurt all last year. He got oh, elbow both. surgery. Oh, yeah. And elbow surgery. But Alex Smith I almost s- lost his leg. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's more of a But I, I, I do want to talk years. awards in general. I do think there's players that are just going to be snubbed in general for awards. I think Big Ben, he's going to be snubbed no matter what. Yeah. I think it goes to Alex Smith. I think that's yeah. just a lock. I, I mean, think but he deserves like it. A, I, like I, a James I, Robinson. Undrafted he rookie, he's not going to get rookie of the year because he won't a, even get second a, because they're a one-win team. Yeah, but do I think he deserves it more than others? Yes, I would I say do. Chase so. Young's probably going to get rookie. Of the I year. think it's going to go to Justin Jefferson. I think I think, so. I think oh, that'll yeah. be who it goes to over any of them. I think Justin Jefferson deserves it, and then Herbert probably second. But I mean, James Robinson without James Robinson, this is a zero-win Jacksonville mm-hmm. Jaguar team. If Chris and without and without Herbert though, they're not a three-win team though. But the, he's just like, he's I not mean, Ty, them you're games. telling me Tyrod Taylor he, wouldn't he, have won at least they lost three. But he kept up with Drew Brees. With a they shootout. lost forty-five kept, to zero to you guys this yeah, but, last week. Yeah, but he I kept mean, up that's with a embarrassing. Yeah, but he kept up with a shootout with Drew Brees. <laughs> I think I think Tyrod Taylor. I mean, his situation was awful too. But I mean, I, Tyrod Taylor takes the Chargers to a five five and eleven at the oh, yeah, worst. Yeah, yeah I think absolutely. Like, so and I mean James Robinson. Undrafted free agent. Can't say enough. And it's just like Minshew. You're just not given anything. Yep. You don't have anything. <laughs> it's, what it's, can you do? It's a front office issue. It's, you know? Yeah. What can you do? It's what it says around you. Top to bottom, too. And speaking of the Chargers and Justin Herbert, the New England Patriots put a 45-0 to zero stomping on those Chargers. Cam, you talk about it all the time. Bill Belichick remains undefeated against rookie quarterbacks. What does he do... Um, so well against inexperienced quarterbacks. In my opinion, what I think he does is he moves that defense around like constantly. He's just constantly showing different defenses, constantly just moving players around, putting them in different holes, blitzing in different holes, different co- different coverages. Like every single play, they're changing. I feel like, and I, that's what that's what Bill is known for. It and, and for all of his career is having is being one of the best defensive coaches to ever to coach. And so I think that alone is why I think is what makes it so hard for rookie quarterbacks to go in. And they're all thinking, oh shit, this is, I'm playing against the greatest quarterback. So that that alone, well, that quarterback, the greatest coach. So that alone, I think, adds pressure into their head that makes them think like, oh, I'm not going to do good. Yeah, that was that was a good matchup too, and I mean Belichick. Because on through, paper, the Chargers are a way better team than us. I mean, through, like if you look at their stats and their players, they're way. We should have not won that game, but that's a Bill. That's a Bill Belichick win by forty-five to nothing. Up and down. I mean, Bill Belichick's keeping this team competitive, even when this team has gone, you know, down in the dumps and they've looked awful. He's. He's remained competitive. Cam Newton only had 90 passing yards that game. They, they if won we had a quarterback that could throw, zero. our team would. And if we, if we didn't fumble in the Bills, if we didn't fumble in that Bills game and and, and not get if stopped. Cam Newton got in against get, Seattle. And if he didn't get stopped against Seattle, we're 8-4 and four instead of 6-6. Six and six. Like, that, that's still the Patriots team right there. Like, still good. That's still, so that's two games right there. It's so like, me personally, Bill Belichick, with what he's had, with eight of his players opting out, most of his defensive players opting out, losing a shit ton in free agency, losing the greatest quarterback of all time, and having to switch to all of this, come on. You got to give Bill credit. He is fucking doing phenomenal, especially with the dog shit receivers we have, the dog shit running backs we have. Gilly even ain't even that good anymore. J.C. Jackson's way better than him. I honestly feel like J.C. Jackson's going to get Defensive Player of the Year. I mean, like... He's balling out. He's, yeah, it's crazy. <clears throat> it's crazy. I mean, that is Bill Belichick, arguably one of the uh, the best coach of all time. Oh, Bill, yeah. Bill Belichick, the best coach of all time. Um, Larry, I need... To just stop taking the Cardinals because I think when I take them, they just they they, they don't they don't get the job done. I, I think this is like a, I think I said this in the past blocks and picks 
Yeah, you think? I think he did. Like I never know, like he's week hurt. six. He's hurt. I think I told you like last week too, though, that this offense is different. They're playing hurt. This they're no, playing. they're different without Larry. No, it does playing. not matter. Larry is the biggest decoy in the book for all of those receivers. <laughs> if Larry's not out there, guess what? None of them do a damn thing. None of them. Not one of them did anything. Christian Kirk, nothing. Isabella, nothing. Hopkins, hardly relevant. Especially against Gilly. Well, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Larry's gone, and this offense is nothing, and we don't even use Larry when he's there. So, and I just think we're just continuously being dumb. That just proves how much of a decoy he actually is. And I hate to say it, I think Kyler's not, he's not a leader of men. That's what I think it is. I think he's just, he's... Not about we football. He's about, I'm going to blame these guys. It's their problem, even though it's his issues. He threw picks. He had issues. And he's more about the cast around him is a problem. It's him. He's making us get shot in the foot in games. And so is our kicker, Zane Gonzalez. So there we go. We're just bound to lose. Cardinals coming off another rough week. Let's see how the leaderboard is shaping up after this week in our picks. And then after this, we have a announcement for this week's picks. We are getting a little ballsy for this week. But before that, let's announce the leaderboards. And today, I'm going to get... I'm going to do things a little differently. Let's start from the I top. I will go first. I was just about to say that. Top to the bottom. Cam, why don't you go first? You know what? I would love to say this week wasn't a good week for me. You know, I'd love to say it wasn't. But I'd it was. I'd love to say this is the first intro that I've heard you say these exact same words. But I mean, like, <laughs> come on. Like, it wasn't even a single-digit win week, baby. It was a double-digit. It was so big double-digit, it could have been triple. But it wasn't. <laughs> it was not big. It could have been triple. But that's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> but I got 13. Points. I was locking on lock with my picks, baby. I was just dominant with them. I loved it. I was just unstoppable. 110 last week to put me at 123. I ain't losing. This is mine. This is all mine, baby. Cam taking a commanding lead. Cole, I mean, no, Fitz, you were in second place. Fitz, what do you got? Well... We're back in double digits, oh, boys. No. Finally. No. We're back in business. Fitz is back, baby. We hit a 10. Ooh. We finally got 10. You know, we missed the lock and the upset because guess uh. what, boys? We botched. We yeah. went back in the statistics. <laughs> oh, I forgot to say I missed my upset, but I got my lock. See? And we missed. <laughs> I messed up, folks. You know, we had the COVID <laughs> off season around here. The friends got their thing and everybody was just around and... Everything happened, and I didn't know who I picked, so I just kind of half-assed went in last week. I'm sorry, fans. And I, yeah, <laughs> that is a booing effort. That's fair. <laughs> and I picked my lock and my upset, both teams that I had done prior. So I changed it in the crew chat before the Bills kick off to the upset of the Niners. And then a lock of the Cowboys over the Ravens because that's how I had to do it. Yeah. And I still got ten points, so we had a good week. Other than that, so that's good. And yeah. we're at a hundred and seven. Uh, so I'm sixteen behind. Hundred and seven. That's ridiculous. Ooh. <laughs> Wild. Again, we're 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 gonna we're gonna do some things this this year. I think we're gonna try and you know maybe do a whole separate race for the playoffs and you know with this new thing that we're doing this week maybe we'll close the gap a little bit but we were in third place and we got another double digit mm, we another one another no, one another one oh my goodness and this time we did it for fits we hit 11 let's go you're not doing it for breeze you gotta do it for fits yeah. that's right, that's right. <laughs> we ain't Always. doing it for breeze we're doing it for fits breeze is on the shelf Fitch just got off the COVID list. It's a good day and to be back. alive. 
And Larry got the job done to put me at 104. Ooh, you're catching up. up. So we are creeping. Colge, after a historically bad. Bad week. Probably mm-hmm. the worst of all. The it worst. Was the worst. <laughs> the I think worst. ever. Not the, even just this season. I think the, tonight he bounces back. The worst week. I think it's even worse this week, ladies and gentlemen. Negative the three. Four, but no. <laughs> Could, did he get a zero? Cold, what did you get? I did not get a zero. Hey, there we go. But I bounced back. Oh! Double digits. Oh! Yeah! I hit my lock, and I even hit my up. Oh! I chose those Giants to go. Yes, he did. To beat the Hawks. But I didn't do it because I actually thought they'd win. That's and I got 12 points. Oh! Let's go. That might be like a historic best week for Chris. Everybody, have dude. We, have yeah. we all gotten a double digit score in one week before? So. I don't feel like we've Maybe at the beginning. I, that was, I really don't. I don't even think at the beginning. You had like nine, didn't you, at the beginning? Yeah, in one week I got like three. Yeah. 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 And then I had a streak literally like the past like eight weeks we've been doing this. Yeah, like seven. Yeah, none yeah. of us have to. There was like a week digits. where we would like all get single digits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And dude, that was a. 10, 11, 12, 13, too. That is. Oh, wow. and my final, my score, I'm creeping up. I got 96. Ooh. 96. I'm almost there at the triple Go. digits. Treep has a couple bad weeks. Yeah. I'm back in third, baby. Me. <laughs> and, 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 this is, and this is before we've even announced the stipulation for this week's mm-hmm. picks. And if you read the title of the video, because I'll put it in the title of the video, maybe a little spoilers, but this week we are going to be doing a double lock and a double upset. So a lot of points are on the line and a chance to make up some points and a chance to maybe lose some points. And for one week only also, we are going to forget about the teams that we have previously locked and previously upsetted, and we're going to just go free range with that. And I also just want to say personally that we haven't got to this game yet. It's an afternoon game. The Seattle Seahawks are playing the New York Jets. And before that game even gets up, if you guys lock the Seattle Seahawks, you have a vagina. (laughs) (laughs) Now, without further ado, let's start off with our Week 14 picks. And on Thursday night, we got a Super Bowl rematch. The Patriots and the Rams, a different quarterback on the Patriots side. Cameron, why don't you break this one down? Who do you got? You know, I love... Really like the big win that we had uh, last week against the Chargers. 45 to nothing. Uh, would have had two punt returns back-to-back weeks, but, you know, one was kind of a, a messed-up call against the Cardinals. Should have had it, but didn't. But we had one in the, against the Chargers, and we even had a blocked field goal returned. Man, our special teams was on fire. Our whole offense and defense was on fire besides Cam's throwing arm. He only got 86 yards. But everything else... Was looking mighty fine. I'm loving it. So I'm going to have to choose the upset with the Patriots against the Rams. And you know, I'm going to actually do the same thing. The I'm going to go to Fitz. Actually, Fitz, what well, do you got? it sounds like you're the... Fitz, 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 Yeah, sounds like you already said the same yeah. thing, so it no, sounds no, like no, we yeah, already called the upset with the Patriots. Let's I was going to tiptoe around that, Fitz, if you want to give wow. some analysis. Wow, he wants oh. to hear everyone else's. He wants he's to like, hear the analysis of the room, because he wants to come... To the Cardinals fan that just had to lose his division. Yeah, I need, I need these two's opinions here. Oh, yeah. The two's opinions of the guy that just watched his Cardinals blow any playoff chances that they ever had this year. And then we're getting ours back, Against baby. the division Rams that have beat us. Hey, guys, guess what? Seven straight fucking times. Let's make it eight to finish the year. Week 17. Can't wait, Rams. <laughs> Can't wait, Can't wait Rams. for you to finish us off. All right, I'm going with the Rams because they're really good this year. They're as hot as shit. I know the Patriots played well. I think this is going to be a dogfight because the Patriots are fighting for the playoffs, and this will be the first time where I don't think they make it. 
This six it's going to be a dogfight for sure. I'm in, like like we Patriots talked about Belichick to before. He's they ha- he has to win the next four games. or You guys have, have to win out. And I just I think this Rams team, they're in that same situation. They don't want to lose anymore. Seattle gave them a freebie. But I don't think that happens anymore this season. Uh, I think the Rams are going to sneak it out. 31-24. And I think it's just going to be probably Daryl Henderson led. I think he's going to have two TDs rushing. It's going to be a good game for him. Cole, should he go? I'm going to have to agree with Bryce. I'm going to choose the Rams. I, the Patriots had a really good week last week, but I don't know. I think the Rams just barely pull it off. After surveying the room, and, He's scared. And, and I was a little scared, and originally I, I had the Pats as a upset, and I actually flip-flopped the Rams in as a lock, too. So I'm very hesitant on this, because I like the Patriots coming off of a big win, and they have Bill Belichick, who needs these wins to get into the playoffs. I also like the Rams, who played some of the cleanest football in the NFL, and they have a great defense. Jalen Ramsey's going to... fuck. Who's Jalen Ramsey going to cover? Who's your number one receiver? Mm, Jacoby Myers? That's, yeah, that's Harry, game over. Harry, Harry and Myers. Well, you know, he's, Cam Newton's not going to be able to throw it anywhere. Aaron we Donald. don't throw the ball anyway. <laughs> what do you mean? That doesn't matter. We, we run the ball. So I'm going to I'm gonna actually lock the Rams to beat the Patriots. And I really actually think that's smart. Because if you really look at it analytics-wise... Cam's not even thrown 100 yards over any of the defenses he's played the past two weeks. Hasn't done it. Doesn't happen. So even if he, he's not going to do it on Ramsey, we already know that. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to happen. And then now you're expecting Cam Newton to get the 12 carries for 60-some rushing yards and a couple scores up the middle against Aaron Donald? My ass. <laughs> Good luck. No. No, not I saw that. a practice video. He was practicing with someone trying to stab him with knives. I was yeah. like, yeah. That's a classic game, yeah. dude. All right, coming up next, we got the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Tennessee Titans. Cole, you got this. I'm locking the Titans, man. <laughs> I love the Titans. And I do I really have to explain it that much? I mean, I don't really want to. Then, I mean, that's You fun. can watch the preview video that Tree does. Fine with me, Fitz, if you got. I, great minds think alike, I am locking the Titans, you know, there we go, I'm thinking DH, you know, he had his worst rushing performance of the season, this Browns team came out, and guess what, what did they do, just like I said last week, they said this, they came out and they proved us, this is a different team, this Browns team serious, well, the Titans, DH, he ain't taking no 50 yards and a fumble this week, he's taking 200 yards rushing, and Back, three touchdowns, And you baby. know what? The Jags, you're in trouble. I think it's going to be close. Mike Glennon will keep it close till the fourth, but I think DH just rumbles away with it. DH with 200 yards. You know, Colton Bryce said it for me. Great minds think alike. And oh. Blocking the Titans. No. No. What more do I have to say? Watch the preview video. All right. <laughs> the Jaguars have been very competitive in their last two games. It's came down to the wire. Mike Glennon has looked very average. He has kept these games very entertaining at the very least. All these games have been fun to watch. The last time the Jags played the Titans, it was 33-30. to Gardner Minshew had a chance to drive them down the field, get into field goal range, and the Jags possibly could have been 2-0. and Derrick Henry didn't do too much there. The Jags run defense playing all right. The Jags are basically submitted into that second overall pick. The Jags can afford to get a second win, and they can afford to make the fans happy. Who can they beat that'll make the fans the happiest? I really don't know. The Titans. They're going to beat the fucking Titans. But can I say something about and... your team that's that proves to me why they're a one-win team? That they're just fully into the tank that they're at right now? We are, but I'm just I'm fucking going. Chase McLaughlin, the kicker. You guys changed kickers. Rosas went like five for five, and they changed kickers the next week. And the guy missed a fucking field goal. Do you know how long week. that bitch was? It was like 40. No. Oh, well, still. 62 yards. I'd still. I expect was, greatness. That was a one kickers. minus one. For the brand, <laughs> I expect greatness. From the record. 
But no, the Jags are going to get the upset, and I'm going to lock that in. It's my upset of the week. So I'll lo- use one of my locks and one of my upsets. Mm-hmm. I need one to counteract Bryce's, one to counteract Cam's. We'll get right there right off the bat, make up some points. Okay. All right, we got the Minnesota Vikings, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Cole, who do you got in this one? Man, you guys know I love the Titans. But I'm going to have to use my second lock and choose the Bucks. I don't think the Vikings, I don't think Kirk Cousins got it in him. Really? Not against the Bucks, man. All right, Cam. So I'm going to use my second lock. Who do you got in this one? You know, uh, I'm just going to choose a, go out and simple and just choose the Bucks on this. Uh, I mean, but at the same time, I really want to choose the Vikings because, god damn, dude, the Vikings are looking, they are looking pretty good the last two weeks, mm-hmm. if I'm being honest. Like, they're putting up some points, and they're looking like a, like a good Vikings team. But Buccaneers, with all they got on there, there's just, it's too hard for me to say the Bucks are losing. All right, and Fitz, who do you got? I'm taking the Minnesota Vikings as my upset of the week. Uh, this Tampa Bay Bucks team's got great run defense. I think Dalvin Cook's going to have a shitty rush game. I think that's just a given because that's Tampa Bay's defense. But I think Kirk Cousins gets it done. I think he'll throw three touchdowns, two to Jefferson, one to Thielen. And I think it'll be enough because Brady's going to throw some interceptions Today, I think it's going to go to good old Eric Kendricks right in the middle for that Vikings defense. And it's going to be a close barn burner. But the Vikings locked themselves in the playoffs after starting 1-5 in five this year. You know, great minds think alike. And that's why I'm going to use up my second upset of the week to upset the Vikings. To beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers... Kirk Cousins got it. Dalvin Cook's got it, dude. Dalvin Cook's got it in the bag. He's the best running back in the NFL right now. I mean, that guy does it all. He can. He's a volume guy. He can get 30 carries a game. He can get into the pass game. And Kirk Cousins does it. Like, I mean, it's just they don't want to open things up with Kirk Cousins. It's not really his fault. I think they're just too hesitant to really give him what he wants, which is stupid because they're paying him so much money, but... They really need to do more with Kirk Cousins, but I think that the Vikings are going to come up on top against the Tampa Bay. But they did finally Bay start years. giving him the pieces. I really do love Jefferson's. I mean, Justin Jefferson's fun. Adam all Thielen. The, all the three receivers that he's in comparison to at this point, up to this point in his season right now, had rookie of the years. Yep. Anquan Bolden, Moss, and I can't remember the other one, but all of them. So, I mean... He's getting the pieces around him. Maybe just get a couple more, maybe a little bit more on the line. And who knows? Might be talking about a Super Bowl contender. Exactly. And, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's going to cap everything off there. We got the Chiefs and the Miami Dolphins. Cole, Judy got in this one. I got Kansas City. No. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. I'm... I mean, dude, I, I personally got Kansas City in this one too, but I, I don't think it's... It's not as simple as people give it credit to be. Like, I think Miami's still a good team. I think their defense is really good. I think Xavier Howard is, like, low-key, like, a top, maybe even top five corner in the league. He has eight picks this year. Yeah. yeah. Leads the league. Mm-hmm. And like, he's had, like, seven last year. So, I mean, just on pace to do crazy things. Like, he's a dog. Like, he's going to be all over the field. And if the Dolphins can score... They could score, but you know you also got to stop Patrick Mahomes, and that's that's a big ask for. Happened. That's a big <laughs> ask for any NFL team. So the Chiefs are going to beat the Dolphins. Cam, who do you got in this one? You know, I really want to choose the Dolphins as the, uh, as an upset because I just have a slight feeling in my balls that the Dolphins will are going to pull out an ups, upset, thirty-one to twenty-eight. Kind of feels like it feels like a Raiders game. Kinda. You know, yeah, I I don't know, I I don't know why. But it's just a feeling I have. So I'm going to have to stick with it. Ooh. I'm going with my balls upset. Dolphins are beating them. Dolphins with the upset of the week. And Fitz, who do you got? I'm taking the Chiefs. Because the Dolphins aren't that good. I, To be honest, I don't know if it was just me. But every time that I 
turn back to like the eight square on direct TV to watch all the games. It was like football follies going up against the Bengals and the Dolphins. I swear, the ball was on the turf every time I was watching. The ball's getting turned over. Somebody's got it going this way, going that way. It's like, holy crap, Jesus, just hold on to the football. Uh, you can't turn over the ball like that against the Chiefs. Uh, the Chiefs are going to tear them apart. I think it won't even be close, to be honest. Tua, Tua does not make that team better right now. And, again, they keep doing the flip-flop on quarterback. It's not going to work, especially not this week. And with the two locks and the two upset rule, it's, it's obviously dividing the room here because we are officially now four games in and no star frames yet in the video. Coming up next, we got fucking, and then there's absolute, oh, actually, this might be the first star frame because I think this is a universally agreed favorite player amongst everybody, but... This is such an average football game. Like I don't, I, I don't have any interest in watching this game at all. We got the Carolina Panthers and the Denver Broncos. Cam, who do you got in this one? You know, I'm definitely not gonna go with the Denver Broncos on this one, there. So you're gonna rock with Teddy Bongwater, or is Teddy Bongwater playing? Pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. He was out for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> he was out for a bit. DJ Walker was out there. I, I, I don't like Drew I don't like Drew Locke. I don't like the way he plays. He's bad. He's like actually bad. I don't like him. Put it in the boat. So put it in the boat. It's about time. Got COVID. It's about it's so time. tragic. It's about damn time, dude. That's their franchise guy. Fitz, who do you got in this one? I'm just gonna have to take CMC in the Panthers. He's coming back hot. He's going to be back. I think he'll have three all-purpose touchdowns. He's going for the hat trick. I thought you were going to say three all-purpose yards. Nope. Uh, Three all-purpose touchdowns, and I think it's going to be a blowout. 42-3. to Bye-bye, Denver. Go back to mile high. That bad? Mm -hmm. See you later. Cold, who do you got? I got Teddy Bongwater in the Panthers. I... It's going to be a shitty game. It's going to be like 7-6. to six. <laughs> Yeah, no. This is a game I have totally no interest in, and that's mm-hmm. why I'm going to take Teddy Ballingwater in Carolina for our first Star Frame. $5 charity of your choice. We, we talked it to existence, and also um, with that Rams and Patriots game, that's the uh, first game in now it's eight videos that we didn't have won the opening game have a Star Frame. The Thursday night football game. An eight straight. Damn. That is ridiculous. Now we got another game that is cut right down the wire. We got the Houston Texans and the Chicago Bears. Fitz, who do you got in this one? I'll tell you what. That was heartbreaking. I know. I do. That was my upset, Texans. dude. If I got that upset too, man, that would have even... It was just heartbreaking. The guy, been... the guy took a snap. He's... Down six in their 40 yard line, about to go win the football, and he fucking fumbled the snap. And that's their season. I mean, that's just been the, the flux of their season. You get rid of DeAndre, you get fire the coach that did that shitty trade. Now you've been going through all this shit. Your best new wideouts now gets PEDs. You're struggling through everything. You're trying to get stay positive and get back you still have a way into the playoffs and then that happens i think that was just the kick to it all i think the bears win by 20 i i, I think montgomery 150 yards and two scores Dog, no, He's a, it's complete, because it's a complete it, different offense and whoever the offensive coordinator is for the bears you might be looking for a head coaching kid because he come. They are offensive coordinator in Pittsburgh. He, he runs two different offenses with two different quarterbacks. You have Foles in, and their run game's complete dog shit, but they're still competitive. And then you have Trubisky in, and their dominant run game. And I think Montgomery, 150 yards, two scores. Did they win by 20? That's what I was saying because like it took and that's that... my lock of Ooh. the week. The Bears. Yeah. Dude, it took me that one time I was at your house to tell Lage that Montgomery was dog shit. 
and then the Packers game after that, he ended up going off. But I'm going to take Chicago, too. It sucks to see Houston go down like this because this is a team with a lot of promise. I think the whole AFC South, except for Jacksonville, of course, has potential to be really good. I mean, Tennessee, Indianapolis, um, and Houston, all are three teams with just a lot of potential. And, you know, Indianapolis, if they can get Carson Wentz over there and if Wentz could kind of revitalize his career with his old coach, you know, that's that's a scene for a team that could, you know, use some youth at quarterback. But I'm going to choose the Bears over the Texans. Cold, you got? I always dog on Chicago, but I'm going to choose them this week. Just the Texans don't have it in them. I like Brandon Cooks, though. He has been consistent for me in fantasy. Especially At least now, 10 points. Especially now he's uh, the number one guy over there. Cam, who do you got? I mean, I'd score the Bears on well in this one. I'm liking them. I don't think the the Texans got it in them this week. Just like Pitt says, they traded away their their only reason to win, their best their best option to win, DeAndre Hopkins. And yeah, that was just a bad move. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that is two back-to-back. Star, Star frames. frames! $5 charity of your choice. Two of them back to back, and now we have the Arizona Cardinals going up against the New York Giants. Fits. This is a Giants team that's kind of hot. Does this team, does this team scare you at all? What do you, what do you, what do you Colt got? Colt McCoy. Yeah, it's Colt McCoy. You should be scared. Do Colt McCoy the heart of Texas? Oh man. The Longhorns. Well, he got it done, but it wasn't because of him. Wasn't pretty. It wasn't him either. Wayne he didn't do it all. Wayne Gallman, 135 <coughs> yards rushing. That was his best rushing game as a Giant so far in his young career with them. Uh, they're on a five-game win streak. They're running hot right now. They got they got the the football team on their tail every week, always winning. So I think they sense that urgency, and I think they continue. Their winning streak. I think they're going to go six games winning. They're going to beat my Cardinals. It's going to be by a field goal, and I'll tell you why. (laughs) Zane Gonzalez is going to miss from 45 yards out. It's going to be wide left because, I'll tell you, guy doesn't miss from 50 and out. He doesn't miss from 39 and in, but 40 through 49, he's a train wreck. Mm -hmm. And guess what? It's over for us this year. See you next year. Dang, you are completely over the Cardinals, Cam. Who do you got? Ouchie. I'm yeah. going with the Cardinals. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they got it in them this year. Like, yeah, Murray's a little hurt and all, but I still think they can get it at the Buda Baker interception. I'm feeling it. You better, yeah, hope that, you better hope that that me saying that Larry holding back the offense was true because you guys are junk. We're saying, but we're gonna we're gonna talk a Buddha pick into uh, no into for six, and he's gonna return it this time. <laughs> yeah, oh, he's six. taking it for six. And oh, that's no, why the Cardinals are gonna win. <laughs> well, you got the Cardinals. In this I got the Cardinals. I think the Giants they're gonna get leveled. And Daniel Jones will be back to play, which he will be hot. I think he's gonna drop three hundred fifty yards and three scores. No honestly. Colt McCoy. Evan no Ingram a hundred yards. He won the job and a touchdown. <laughs> Colt McCoy should have already had the job before the season. He should have. Danny Dimes is a joke. I'm also going to take the Arizona Cardinals. Fits, man. I know how it feels, bro, but you got to. You got to trust. Yeah, man. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't in a that spot A three-game lose yet. streak when we lost everything, there is no trust. You lose. We were 5-2. and two. We've lost four out of the last five. We've walked ourselves right out of the best position in the NFC. Well, through the last this five is a weeks. get right game. There is no you. optimism. This is a get, this yeah, this is a get right game for the Giants. We are everyone's get right game. That's what it is. Jared Goff threw 47 for 55 attempts, eight incompletions, eight in 55 attempts. But no. that's garbage defense. <laughs> but it's we'll not see. even. That's just tackling. Hey, if you guys have individual defensive players, start Buda Baker. <laughs> he'll get you 20 tackles because he'll be all over the field cleaning up everybody else's badass job that we mm-hmm. 
suck at doing. That is we're rough on the Cardinals today. We'll see how they do on Sunday. Coming up next, we got a shit storm of a matchup. We got the Dallas Cowboys and the Cincinnati Bengals. For the love of God, I'll, I'll start this one off. For the love of God, if there's ever going to be a game for Ezekiel Elliott to get going, please let it be this week because this is the beginning of the fantasy playoffs. And in one league, I have a bye week. Doesn't really matter. And the other two, I have Ezekiel Elliott. He's been playing terrible. I need him to finally have a big day. And please let it be this week against this dog shit Bengals team. And, oh, fuck. I was going to lock the Cowboys, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not that ballsy. So I'm just going to take the Cowboys to beat the Bengals. Simple as that. Cold shoot you got. I got the Cowboys also. And I also think Ezekiel Elliott will have 137 rushing yards and one rushing touchdown. Any fumbles? He's had some fumble issues. No. Gets Zero. Right on, gets, gets right for Tree. Gets right for Tree. There we go. I love to hear that. <laughs> By the way, I'd like to congratulate you in, po- in person for uh, making the uh, Big Pete's Playhouse. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank Bryce for reminding me at 9.55 a.m. Sunday morning every Joe, week Joe Mixon. To, to change my lineup. Joe Mixon is back, right? He's playing? No. No, he's still, he's still not bad. I don't think so. so I, I think he's, so, he's done. I think he's pretty much like so Bernard, messed up his foot. So Giovanni and who's he's, the other? It's just him. That's, what that's I all I know. Yeah. Giovanni Bernard's still on the Bengals. Yeah, yeah a little Gio. Yep. Really? A little Gio. I did yeah. not know. I thought he was out of the NFL. Dude, I talked because Colton came over the other day, and mm-hmm. I was like, I can't believe little Gio is still on your team. Now, who used to be the other one that they had? They had Jeremy him, Hill. And he's on a LSU. team. No, he's no longer. He's no. bounced around the league. I thought he was. On he league. retired a long time ago. He was on the ago. Eagles for a bit, wasn't it he? Was like, it's, it's, I thought I saw him score it's, a touchdown. It's almost or like a practice play. squad Alfred Morris name. You know? Dude, that's and where I saw Jeremy Alfred Hill Morris, Morris play. I don't yeah, know. he played this weekend. And what team was he For on? the Giants. Yeah. Got I activated that on Sunday. I just totally forgot he was a person there yeah. for a second. Great guy. Oh, I love him. But I'm taking the Cowboys, you know? No, this this team these games are garbage. Yeah, yeah dude, that's you know? terrible. This is uh, like this is like, you know. I ain't tuned this, in. This is the worst TV, right here. The worst telly. Yeah, and uh, you know. You're like I'd rather be watching the Jags. And I type. I think this is a get right game for Tree, but I think Zeke, you know, I think he's gonna catch five catches out of the backfield, sixty yards. It's a touchdown. And he's going to get, he's going to get two touchdowns. Hey. He's going to rush for 100 yards on top of that. Hey. It's going to be all Zeke, you know? Because Red Rocket, he just doesn't got nobody else. Yeah, Trey. Oh, yeah, it's the Red Rocket versus the Bengals, too. There's that storyline. Oh, man. Exactly. Maybe he's going to throw 350 yards. It's his get-right game, and that's why he's going to have the five throws. For 60 yards to Zeke. Well, there it is. Cam, what do you got in this one? I'm going to have to go with Dallas this time. Uh, I just... This is right. This this is... If any... If if, the, if he's going to come back from a run... Have a good running game against anyone, it's going to be against this shitty-ass Bengals defense. So I'm going to have to go with Dallas and the Red Rocket. All right. For uh, Red Rifle's... Uh... Get right game for the Bengals. It's going to result in our third star frame. Five dollars charity. Your choice. And coming off of that shit game, this is a game that another one that is about right as right down the middle as you can get. We got the Indianapolis Colts going up against the Oakland Raiders. Fitz, who do you got in this one? Uh, I'm going to take the Colts. Because every time I've doubted them, it seems they just proved me wrong this year. I thought they wouldn't even give the Titans a run for their money in the division game, and they end up winning that one. Then they held off the Texans last week. They just keep finding ways to win. I think Phillip Rivers hooks it up. Naeem Hines gets 150 yards all purpose. And they get it done. Cole, should you got this one? I got the Raiders, and I think... Philip Rivers throws three picks, one to the house. See, you know, twenty-four to seventeen. You know, it's like we say this every week now. Philip Rivers, man, 
Like, he just keeps winning, bro. I, I, right? I just want him to lose. I know. I do too, bro. I have I no love for Philip Rivers. No, I have no love no, for the Colts. The Barnhouse Productions has no love for Philip Rivers. No, absolutely no Hates love. Hates them. But I think Indianapolis is going to take this. Um, if the Raiders play like how they played against a team that absolutely has no interest in winning at all, they are going to get shit stomped by the Colts. Won't even be close. Cam, who do you got in this one? I don't trust Phillip Rivers. I don't. I don't like him. I don't trust him. He throws more interceptions than he does touchdowns, and I don't like it. But I'm choosing the Colts. I don't trust the Raiders. The Raiders are a hard team to trust this year. I mean, early on, man, that was Derek Carr looked really yeah, good. Yeah, and how they really beat the good. Chiefs. Yeah. After, like, after that, I was like, all right. And this even if the... Josh Jacobs comes back, it's not. It's I mean, you look. Issue. You look at like how we how some teams were early on. You look at how they are now. I mean, I mean the Col- I thought the Colts were going to be bad after we beat them, but I mean now they're just that's a team. Mm-hmm. Nonstop. If the Colts are a weird team in the off season, what do you do with like Philip Rivers? Like, do you, what do you what do you do at that quarterback position? Do you try and get Carson Wentz? Well, it depends on how no. the year goes. The year's still there. Yeah, Carson Wentz is no. He's no. he's done. The he's year's done. still on in play, and I don't think I don't think if you go anywhere in the playoffs, which they're in the front seat for, that they're going to keep Rivers him for another will year. ever be taken out of the starter position. Yeah. They're going to keep him for another year, another year and they're probably going to pick up Wentz. Because the Eagles, they dropped. They didn't drop him, but they benched Wentz and put Hurts in. And a, and yeah. a big thing I think that's going to be a big thing in this matchup is T.Y. Yes, he gets hurt all the time. But he, is, he's but he cooks. He's starting to cook up with, with Rivers now the past few weeks. And if he gets hot and they start getting good when the playoffs come around, who knows? They have a good a chance as anybody. I mean, yeah. I mean, like I said, I keep saying, dude, the playoffs this year might be some of the best playoff football like that we've ever seen. And on top of that, it's like Rivers, if he does get there and he, they pull off some shit and they get, like, maybe a championship game against Mahomes, yeah. he's already played those games multiple times from being in the division. So, I mean, he, it's, he has one up on other people. Who haven't had as much, you know, experience there? Yeah, it's it's, it's going to be interesting, and that's we're getting we're getting closer and closer to playoff football, boys. This is where this is where it gets exciting. Even if you're a Jags fan, you have no one to root for, but it should be fun. Coming up next, we got the easiest game of the week, and a game we shouldn't spend too much time on. The game I mentioned earlier, we got the Seattle Seahawks and the New York Jets. Bits, who do you got? The Seahawks. Five Cam. touchdowns. <laughs> Cam. We're getting free groceries. <laughs> We're getting free. For Ten free years, free, baby. Has Russ, has Russ fucking gotten anywhere close to five TDs this I year? Think, yeah, I think he's No, it's it. just the Seahawks. Just I listened the Seahawks. to the ad today. So it could be their backup even. It could be rushing touchdowns and passing. Wait, the oh, whole just team? together. Yeah, Seahawks oh, touchdowns. Oh, they're good. Have the they're team sh- ever? Has the so, team, has a team so many people are getting free groceries <laughs> Well, for 10 years at least. That was the deal. <laughs> Dude, Six bet? touchdowns for life. Dude, do you think every NFL team has a deal with an Albertson Safeway Corporation store? No. <laughs> it's just, Absolutely I think it's not. just a Safeway uh, Seahawks thing. That's insane, but... You know, hopefully someone wins groceries for life and hopefully it changes their life. I hope so. Hope it goes to a family in need. I do too. So you're taking the Seahawks? No. I'm what? kicking the Jets as the upset because you said whoever oh. lost the Seahawks is a vagina. So I'm upsetting the Jets. The Seahawks didn't look good against uh, the Giants. Dude, they're going to be 0-2 versus teams from New York. Dude, New York? <laughs> New York's a deep dish pizzas are taking over. I'm just saying, man. Watch me. New York. Watch me be right. Watch me be right. The Jets... Finally, do it. It's gonna be one the- win. It's gonna be against the Super Bowl winners. And you know, this is what this is where I go back to it too. This is because 
Nobody hypes up Frank Gore. Here we go. Here we go. Thirty-seven-year-old. He's out though. He's out this week. No, no, you don't know that. He might be back. He's questionable. Yeah, he's questionable. Exactly. But nobody around here. This whole table. They'll sit around it and they don't even talk about the man. The guy's thirty-seven. He's defying fucking odds. And these guys don't bring it up. But then they get on my ass every time I bring him up. But you know what? Put some respect on the goddamn guy's name. Frank Gore. Frank Gore. Frank the Tank. Twelve rushes. 69 yards. <laughs> and put a touchdown on that okay. bitch. We'll put, a, put touchdown a touchdown on, on that bitch because you know why? They winning. He's got them for the upset of the week. I'll give each one of you one dollar. A one dollar bill that the think... Seahawks win. Not everyone that's listening, <laughs> but everyone in this room right now. I think Frank Gore gets 14 carries for 36 yards. Boo. See, look at this guy. Boo. <laughs> Has he even done no, that? No, let's season? be realistic. Have you looked at his numbers? No, let's be realistic. 13 <laughs> carries for 40. That's not even realistic either. All right, man. here we go. I'm going with Seattle still. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> going. Dang it. But Frank Gore. I thought I got you for a no, second. No, Frank Gore, he's the man. But the Seattle still got it, you know? They're going to dominate. Because my division sucks to be in. <laughs> Okay, what do you got? I definitely got the Hawks on this one. I'm not choosing the Jets. We're very, very close to a star frame until Cole had to fuck it up. But I mean, fucking A. That hits. I think we've all picked the Jets for an upset at least once. At least once. once. I did. And they were I close, did. damn it. Dude, they were all <laughs> pretty fucking close. I only lost mine by freaking three points. I was like, God damn it. I'm pretty sure, like, mine was... Remember. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. they lost to, like, seven. It was, oh yeah, 34 to 26 to the Chargers. And Flacco was coming back. He had a game-winning drive. But he couldn't pull it together. But he it. couldn't pull it together. Yeah. Flacco. All right, coming up next, we got a NFC North battle between Green Bay and Detroit. Cole, who do you got in this one? I almost wanted to pick the Lions. Right there, man. On. I love me some Matthew Stafford. I would die for Matthew Stafford. I want to die for him. I'd die for Ryan Fitzpatrick. There's rumors and talks that they're gonna get, that they're gonna get rid of uh, Stafford. No, not Stafford. Uh, Patricia. Yeah. He's fired. Oh, oh, yeah, he did get fired last week. Fired. Bevel oh, came yeah. in this week, and they got the hot dub. And I almost want to pick him, but Aaron Rodgers, he's going to throw four touchdown passes and rush for one. I mean, dude, have you ever, like, I feel like every professional, like, Facebook page on Facebook tries to hype up Aaron Rodgers so hard, like, as, like, a top five QB of all time. Not of all time. I'd say he's top ten. I would, I would too. Top ten, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't put him at top five either. Top ten's right where he needs to be. I'd say seven. He's, he's had seventy thousand yards. He's, yeah. I mean, he's done a lot, but it's one touchdown isn't enough to put. We you have up to look at the receivers he's up had through too. the top. He's had ten. That's why. I, that's that's why. That's why I look at the he's receivers a, and the defense. A whole supporting cast of mm-hmm. Hall of Famers. Yeah, and he's had All one ring. Yeah, one. It's just, he's, like, I mean, he's a guy you know, and he's a guy you talk about, but, like, I feel like for me, he's just never been a guy that I've thought of as, like, a top 10 QB. I should, mm-hmm. but I just In our don't. era right now, he's for sure a top 5 quarterback playing right now, but altogether, top 7. He's a 7. Do you think he's better than Patrick Mahomes? No. This season? No. I don't think... Would pa- you take Aaron Rodgers over Patrick Mahomes? Nope. I'd take Mahomes. At any point in his career? No, right now. Right like, now, no. Mahomes. No, Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. Because Mahomes Do you just think has Aaron Rodgers, Rod- let's put, would you take Aaron Rodgers on the Kansas City Chiefs over Patrick Mahomes on the Kansas City Chiefs? I'd no. Still choose, Absolutely I'd still choose not. Mahomes. I'd still choose Mahomes. Mahomes is a better quarterback. Mahomes is the best quarterback in the league. He is. No doubt about it. Yeah. I don't think that, I think Mahomes is going to win another MVP this year. Yeah. No, I don't think he will. You don't think so? I don't think he will. Who do you, do you, who do you think wins it? I think Aaron Rodgers is in the conversation. He's always in the conversation. Every year he is. No, I think, I think Russell Wilson's out of the conversation. Yeah, and especially after he loses to the Jets this week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, okay, let's go back to the Packers and the Lions. Cold sh- Packers. All right, Cam, and then who do you got in this one? I really want to choose the Lions, but at the same time, I really want to choose the Packers because this game is always a barn burner game. 
They always play two times a year. It's always been tough battle games. I really want to choose the Lions. I really want to choose the Packers. So I just don't really know who I'm going to choose. So I'm going to have to go with the roll of the dice and go with the Packers. All right, and Fitz, who do you got? I'm taking my upset, my other upset of the week here with the Lions. Uh, they came off with the hot dub last week. Daryl Bevel came out and coached some energy into him. Matthew Stafford talked about him after in a press conference. So it's always good to hear that with, you know, coaches getting that going. So I don't know. I just, I'm riding the energy. Stafford's got it going. I liked how AP ran. I really did. He had a physical energy to him. He pushed people at he had a goal line run where he ran through two guys and looked back, threw the touch ball down, looked back at Stafford and just got hot against the Bears. I think that's the energy you love to see from AP. And I think that's the energy we're going to see this week. I haven't picked him up on my fantasy this week. Thinking. It's going to be a hundred yards and a touchdown. Not two touchdowns this week. Sorry, AP. You got that last week. No, he's getting two this week. I'm, I'm going to take the Packers as my second and final lock of the week. I'm going to say Aaron Rodgers gets the job done, does Aaron Rodgers things against Detroit. Coming up next, this, man, this is a tough week to do these locks and mm-hmm. these upsets. I mean, I think just in a regular week, like picking a lock and picking an upset would have been you know, very difficult. Right here we got the Falcons and the Chargers fits. What do you got in this one? I'm taking probably the Falcons. Probably, or you're going to? I think I'm going to take the Falcons. You think you're going to, or yeah, you're going to? Yeah, these two, they just choke. You know, they're both choke artists. So they're just constant. Taking? But I'm taking them Falcons. But they're just chokes. They just choke. Both of them do. That's what they're bound to do. So if either way, if it goes either way, it's going to be because somebody choked. <laughs> Pick six, pick. Isn't that, that how all games are? No, I'm talking. No, no, it isn't. <laughs> it really isn't. No, just somebody wins a game. I'm talking. There, it's going to be a blatant choke. Matt Ryan's throwing a pick. Somebody's throwing a pick. But I don't think it's going to be Matt Ryan. It's going to be Herbert. Julio, hundred yards, touchdown. Easy all right, money. Cole, who do you got? Julio, zero catches, zero yards. But I still think the Falcons do it. Julio's washed. Julio's washed. He isn't. Cam, who do you got? I might have to go with the Falcons on this one. I'm also going to take Atlanta, and I think there's going to be a lot of offense in this game. I think it's going to be unnecessarily high scoring. I think the Chargers come off of not scoring any points and scoring like 30 points. 38-42. And I'm going to take the Falcons for our fourth... Star frame. Five dollar charity. Your choice. Four star frames. That was the, t- or no, we had five last week. So one off of the total from a week ago. Coming up next, we got the Washington football team going up against the 49ers. And man, oh man, like I think one thing that you'll realize going through all these pick videos is coming off of a hot dub means a lot Mm -hmm. and I think in this game I think the football team is going to make a statement and kill the 49ers I don't think it's going to be even close I think the the football team defense shows up Alex Smith continues to do what he does and uh, scary, ter- scary Terry reminds me a lot of uh, Allen Robinson. I think I just don't want his career to be similar to Allen Robinson. So I hope if you know Alex Smith, you know you obviously got to move on from him. I hope they either get Terry McLaurin a quarterback, or he continues his career somewhere else where he can play for an elite quarterback and he doesn't have to continuously play for Nick Foles, Mitch Trubisky, Blake Bortles, etc. Because he's a really good receiver. So, I'm going to take Washington over the 49ers. Cam, who do you got? I'm definitely going to have to choose Washington over the 49ers, too. By the uh, way, also, I really like Chase Young, too. I think Chase mm-hmm. Young is one of the best rookie pass rushers to come out in the last five, six years. Besides Joey and uh, Joey and Nick Buck. Dude, I think it's TJ Watt. And TJ Watt. His ceiling's high. Mm-hmm. Chase's ceiling's really high. Um, but, yeah, no, I'm going to have to choose Washington on this one. Uh... I just I, I have faith in them. I feel like they're gonna do good this game. 
and I'm just going to stick with it. Washington's quickly, they're becoming one of my, you know, favorite football teams to root for. Fitz, who do you got? I'm taking Washington. I love Alex Smith. I've always been a fan of Alex Smith. Uh, I have as well. I'm just glad he came back and he's playing as well as he does. Uh, this is the revenge game. Former drafted yeah. team to the 49ers here. Uh, I think Alex Smith just eats him up. I really do. I think he's going to just kick their ass. The Niners, they last week they are trying to play to stay at 500 to keep in the playoff hunt. I think they just got are going to be demoralized after losing and going below 500 again. And with Jimmy G and George two weeks out, they're probably just done for the season. I think Washington wins 30-plus. Logan Thomas has two touchdowns. Love Logan Thomas. Hooks yeah. up with Alex Smith. Cole, who do you got? I'm choosing the 49ers just out of spite. Ooh. <laughs> Dick. Yeah. You don't like the football team? Well, I like him. I love Alex Smith. Love the guy to death. But I'm doing it just out of spite. Just because. Dick. Because I'm a whore. You are a whore. I like it. I like <laughs> You're a nose. whore with sweaty pits. I do have sweaty pits. Sweat I always do. You sweat more than a whore in church. I don't think you can say that anymore. No. No, that's... God, no. That ain't PC anymore, is it? <laughs> Alrighty, coming up next, we've got the Saints going up against the Eagles. Colts, this was actually, this is a game that's uh, near and dear to both of our oh, hearts. Oh, yes. You lost, lost 100 bands on this game. <laughs> <laughs> 100 <laughs> uh, bones. <laughs> yeah. 100 bones on Nick Foles and the Eagles and Drew Brees and the Saints. That, was like, that hurted. That was a killer game, dude. I remember that. That was insane. But uh, this one is Taysom Hill against Carson Wentz. Right. Jalen Hurts. Oh, yeah, Jalen Hurts is starting. Dang. They, they bench wins at half. What what a different NFL this is. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is crazy. I'm going to take the Saints just because they have more experience with Taysom Hill. My guy, Jameis Winston, still getting snubbed. Cold you to go. I got the Saints, and I don't think Jameis Winston's getting snubbed. I think he <laughs> deserves to be a third-string quarterback. I don't think he was ever He's good. He's the best third-string quarterback I didn't think he time. was going to be good. He never was. He was good at stealing crab legs. He's the first ever 30-30 quarterback. Because he's him, that dude. bad. I hate him. He's, he's literally so that bad. I'm sorry to shit on your parade and your parade, yeah. but I hate him. Literally the two best third-string quarterbacks of all time are Jameis Winston and Blake Bortles. No. Charlie White. They're the worst third string quarterbacks of all time. Jesus. <laughs> Name a third string quarterback you'd rather have than Blake Bortles and Jameis Winston. I'd rather have RG3 than Blake Joshua Bortles. Joshua Cowan, the clipboard Jesus. Uh, the guy. Oh, it's Josh Joshua Dobbs. <laughs> Dobbs. Ben Dobbs. Dobbs. Ben I'd rather have Joshua Dobbs. Dobbs. <laughs> all right, Ben Danucci. I like yeah. Ben. Fucking Luke Falk. <laughs> <laughs> hey. X Y Z. Yeah, that's that, that Broncos about. receiver that played quarterback for that one. <laughs> I'd day. rather choose him over Jameis Winston. Yeah, me too. All right, I still choose Jameis. Fellow Jameis fan, who do you got? Saints or the Eagles? Dude, I'm locking the Saints. I'm even locking them so bad they're gonna put Jameis in. You're locking them that hard. Yeah. All right, and Betsy, who do you got? I'm taking. The Saints. No! Because, you know, Taysom Hill's just a baller. He's going to get it done. I think he'll have two rushing touchdowns, just like normal. Doesn't throw passing TDs. He just rushes them in. And that is going to be our fifth star frame. $5 charity. Your choice. All righty. And uh, fun fact, did you know Taysom Hill is a dick in real life? Did you know he's from Pocatello, Idaho? Yeah. And did you know he's an actual cocksucker? <laughs> I did. I did. Well, yeah. he, he doesn't actual suck up, but he's an asshole. Um, yeah, allegedly. I did not know. Who allegedly, said that? he's an asshole. Yeah, allegedly, one of my my sources who's interviewed him before <laughs> says that he's just a dick. No way. Yeah, just not a good well, guy. Well, apparently, he's coming for Drew Brees' job. Yeah, just not because yeah. he's a dick. <laughs> Below average feller. But all right, coming up next, we got a straight down the middle and even matchup, but before we get into that, of course, we have 
a live special performance. We can never miss it. It is <clears> your <throat> favorite best singer since Christina Aguilera Colge with this Sunday night. Sunday night! gets better and better every time. Well, last week was better. Last week was last better, week but... was really good. But, I mean, it's... it's <laughs> but I started off horrible this oh, year. Oh, horrible. yeah, you did. It was horrid. I was thinking about it way too much. You had no, you had no off season to prepare. Yeah, yeah. it was just like the, it was like the actual league. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair. All right, so we got the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Buffalo Bills. The Steelers coming off a tough loss. Cole, how are the Steelers gonna rebound this one? Um, I think the Steelers lose two games in the regular season, and I'm gonna choose the Bills as my upset. If there's gonna be a team to beat us. It's going to be the Bills. I think we still beat the Colts. We're still going to beat the Bengals and the Browns, personally. But I'm choosing the Bills as my upset. Because we had a horrible performance against Washington. I, I think that's a fair pick. And I, I'm also going to go with you and choose the Bills. I mean, dude, I can't, I can't think of a better place for Stephon Diggs to be than Buffalo. Yeah. Oh, he is looking mm-hmm. good in Buffalo. He looks he's looking better in Buffalo than he did with the Vikings. I mean, you know when I when I talked about how Josh Allen, you know, is a matter of scheme because you know he has a bunch <laughs> of speedy receivers. <laughs> Stephon Diggs is the definition of the best. Well, other than you know Tyree Kill, but mm-hmm. I mean that's the they put Jason Verrett the, on skates. The best speedy skates. receiver that has great. He has great oh, yeah. route running ability. Oh, his route running is insane. Dirty, dirty feet moves. Joe Hayden still has a pick, though. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta give it to him, man. All right. No, I'm thinking Fitzpatrick has a pick. Mika. Oh, I can see that, too. I'm thinking... That's a good possibility. Tyson Aluwalu gets a strip sack. Oh, yeah. I love him. We still play good. We're still gonna be in this game. Oh, Don't yeah. get me wrong. Oh, yeah, you're gonna be in the game. Because we're gonna be pissed off when we lost to the Washington football team. We're gonna have, you know, the whole week to recover. Or but you have to remember, you have two of your main goal, pass rushers gone for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. That's a big yeah. hit to your defense. Yeah. But TJ still gets it done, man. Two sacks. TJ Watts a dog. Cam, who do you got? I'm going to have to go with you guys. I'm going with the Bills. I honestly think the Bills are a better team than the Steelers. I honestly think so. I've been watching a lot of videos from a lot of sources, from a lot of people. Just Colin Coward. Yeah, <laughs> just Colin Coward. He watched one video about Colin Coward. No, he wasn't, he's, not, he's not the only one. No, he's not the only one. He's not the only one. Uh, I've, watched, I've watched other. I've watched other. I've Fucking watched others. skip and shatter or whatever. <laughs> but I mean, like... Uh, Skip! I, I don't know. <laughs> I, think the, I, honestly think, I, I honestly do think the Bills are better. So I'm going with the Bills. I, I do think the Bills are a better team top to bottom. Well... On the offense, I don't even know. Josh Allen. Uh, I mean, as they're, right they're, now, they're offense, equal. They're yeah. on equal. They're on equal playing. Top right? to bottom, I'd take the Steelers better. The uh, Pittsburgh. We have, the, we have the most I, drop I passes so. this year. Yeah, you have crazy. The See, most. That's well because your receivers aren't thing. actually and he, and, good. And, and you're also. Throwing, throwing, I think it's because yeah. they're young. And, and yeah. I think it's more most. of a young, mm-hmm. young thing. Claypool's yeah. there. You still, you have, yeah, a lot Juju's of young people. Young, You're Deontay's still young. I don't think any of them's over people. 24 or 25. Exactly. I mean, Juju's in, what, his second, third year? Third. Third. I think he's still he's like 24. Tw- yeah, he's, he's still 24, 24 yeah. and it's a third year. They're all yeah. in rookie time. They're and all they're all young. Contract. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. It's kind of hard to not have like uh, a better some mistakes. Yeah, have some mistakes Who is your better wide receiver? We don't like how James Washington, but I'd take yeah, I'd take I take, I'd take the yeah. Steelers' offensive line over them. I'd take mm-hmm. James Conner over. Devin but James Singletary Conner hasn't done shit. This year. I'd, I'd take him COVID. over. I'd take him over Devin Singletary. Well, any day he was least. when he was playing. He was number six. He was right, right or six or seven, right behind Kyler Murray for rushing. And he had a, he had a hundred rush, a couple hundred yard rushing games. Mm-hmm. He, I oh, mean, he's, I... he definitely is better than Singletary. When he's there, we, we play better for sure. But. I think this Steelers team is just injury fatigued. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think it's it's not that they're a bad football they're playing team. Hurt. It's, it's never that they're bad. It's just that it's to a point when you're so hot, you're playing hot, you're always trying to play top football every week. Mm-hmm. You start to when, slow down. And that's when your body gets stressed. And these hurt. last few weeks, even before the football team game, they started to slow down. 
And they, mm-hmm. it kind of was like, they, okay, these are, teams are cutting it close against these yeah. guys. Because, I mean, we beat the Ravens mm-hmm. at their peak. We beat, we shut down D.H. against yeah. the Titans, but, yeah. But, but you down. still held, you kind of slowed down, and teams are starting to put it closer and closer and closer mm-hmm. and closer. So I think just off that, I think the Bills are really playing hot. You guys are injury fatigued, and it's gonna, you guys are going to start to lose, and the Browns are going to start catching up, maybe. I think this is the last game that we lose, man. Honestly. So you're taking the Besides Bills. Well, I'm taking the Bills. Playoffs. All right. So with the with the Bills there, that's gonna be a star frame five dollar charity. Your choice. And that's what I, that's what I was talking about earlier. It's crazy what happens when you come off a hot win, or a hot you know a hot loss even. Mm-hmm. All right, and then for Monday night, we got another AFC North matchup. We got the Cleveland Browns and the Baltimore Ravens. Cold shoot you got? I got the Ravens. I think I the Browns just play a little too hot, a little too hot to handle last week. I think... I think, because Baker always does it. He plays really good, then he plays really bad. Maybe for a couple games. Then plays really good. I don't know. I think Baker doesn't necessarily have to play at the level that he played at against Tennessee to win football games. I think it's either run really well. And I think... With Nicholas. Yeah, and Kareem. Kareem Slut. So, I think either way, they're going to they're gonna try and find a way to win. And Baltimore is not that good. I really mm. don't... Think so. I also they were way better last year than they were this year. They're, if I'm getting, they're starting to get figured out. And that's why I think Cleveland's going to win. I think Cleveland starts an inch closer to taking that division. Um, maybe not winning the division. I think Pittsburgh still kind of has that. But I think this is where Cleveland starts to separate themselves. And I'm going to take Cleveland. Fitz, who do you got? I'm taking the Browns. Uh, they're starting to look really good. They're starting to put everything together. This... Ravens team, they're not very good, but it's just a very good schemed run offense. That's all it ever has been. They've always schemed an offense to be really dynamic running-wise behind around Lamar. He's had 12 games of 200-plus rushing yards in the past two seasons. Everybody else in the league has less than six. There's... I mean, they double up on every everybody in that stat. So it's ridiculous to think that. But I think the Browns know that. They're scheming. They just got DH covered up. They're prepared for that style of play. The Browns are going to get it done. Nick Chubb has 150 yards rushing. And Kareem has 100 yards rushing. I think they get it done and dominate the Ravens. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to conclude our... Oh, you didn't oh. even choose me, asshole. Oh. So I'm going to have to go with the Browns, you fucking dick. Oh, wow. Big sorry. Cam, who do you got in this one? You just said the Browns. I literally Browns. just said it. Well, fuck, I thought you were going to break down some analysis. No, nope. <laughs> you don't get it now, bitch. You didn't want it before. <laughs> you don't get it now. Sorry, it's, it's getting late. It's like 2 a.m. right now. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, now that's going to conclude. This is the earliest the podcast has ended. They mm-hmm. usually go to like 2.30. Last fuck you. Literally. We left at 3. Yeah, so <laughs> fuck you. Excuses. <laughs> Alright, that's going to conclude our NFL picks, locks, and upsets. Colch, any final words for the people? No, I just, I just want you guys to have the best day that you can. Cam? I hope you have a good day. Fitz, have a better week than me. All right. That's not hard at all. the Cardinals losing every week. All right, you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys haven't already, make sure you check all the links down below. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel three days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Those are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.